Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so uh, in example zero, I showed you how to prove Cauchy's theorem for contour integration. And uh, in this first of a number of examples, we're going to see just how powerful and useful Cauchy's theorem is when we're doing contour integrals. So to that end, let's work on this. Yeah? Okay, cool. Now, the contour C that we're talking about is going to be made of two circles because the contour C is the boundary of the annulus between the circles given by the norm of Z is equal to 1 and the norm of Z is equal to 3. Now, notice that we want C to be a simple closed contour, uh, but two circles do not make a simple closed contour. So to make a simple closed contour out of these two circles, what we're going to do is use the idea of the cross cut. I first introduced the idea of the cross cut in a video where I show you how to do the integral of 1 over z. And so it's very important that you watch that video. And more importantly, it's crucial that you understand what the cross cut is because without um, having an idea of what the cross cut is, uh, you're not going to understand this video as well as many other videos that use the idea of the cross cut. Now, question, how are we going to do this? How are we going to do this integral over C? Well, Cauchy's theorem. So let's remind ourselves of what Cauchy's theorem said. Cauchy's theorem said that if f of z is analytic, meaning differentiable, so analytic is just the word we use to mean differentiable when we're talking about functions of a complex variable. But yeah, if f of z is analytic everywhere, interior to and on a simple closed contour c, then the integral over c of f of z is equal to zero. What? Is this really true? Yes. Um, I show you why this is true, which is I show you the proof of this in example zero. So check that out. Uh, but yeah, this is a very, very powerful statement because in this specific example, look at what it will allow us to do. First, let's get a visual for these two circles and the complex plane. And let's um, see how we're going to uh, form the simple closed contour C because uh, read here. C is a simple closed contour, right, um, in Cauchy's theorem. Okay, okay, okay. But yeah, so first, um, the two circles. C1 is the smaller circle given by the norm of Z is equal to 1, and uh, C2 is the bigger circle given by the norm of Z is equal to 3. Now, we have the annulus, which is uh, this here, right? Jesus, why does my, like, mouse skip every time I come around here? Like... Okay, anyway, <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, we have C1 and C2, but we don't have a simple closed contour. And so here's where the idea of the cross cut comes in. So uh, we're going to make a cross cut to join C1 and C2. So uh, that would look like this. Again, uh, in that video where um, I introduced the cross cut on the integral of 1 over z, I labor um, talking about the cross cut, which is like I repeat myself several times because you need to understand what the cross cut is. So I talk about it in great detail in that video, and therefore I'm not going to talk about it in as much detail here. But yeah, so basically this gap and the cross cut is infinitesimally small. And um, so uh, watch that video that I mentioned uh, in order for you to understand why this gap is uh, infinitesimally small. We can make it arbitrarily small. But in any case, um, you have this infinitesimally small gap. And so using it, you uh, get off C2 and come into C1. Uh, let me be more specific. So right now, we don't see any C here. You don't see any C here, do you? Uh, you see C1 and C2. So C is a simple closed contour that we're going to make using the cross cut here. And here's how. Um, suppose uh, that we start right here on C. So by right here, I mean on C2, but we're really on C because C is going to be made of C2, C1, and the cross cut. So C is everything that you see in this visual. Now, first, um, integration over a contour is considered a positive orientation or set to be positively oriented if it is in the counterclockwise direction. So that's the blue arrow here showing that on C2, uh, the positive direction is counterclockwise this way. And then on C1, similarly, uh, this blue arrow is showing that uh, the positive direction is the counterclockwise direction. Yeah? Okay, cool. But C is made of C2, C1, and the cross cuts, right? Okay. So then if we start right here on the red arrow on C, we're positively oriented using the red arrow. So we go this way. 
on C2 and then we stop here and we could have made this cross cut anywhere right we could have made it right here but yeah we stop here and now we come in using the cross cut and we get on C1 but when we get on C1 we have to go to keep our positive orientation on C we have to go negative orientation on C1 so we go here uh, I'm already talking about uh, the cross cut in greater detail than I wanted in this video but I want you to understand it if, in case you're uh, too lazy to watch that other video that I mentioned. But anyway, yeah, we go in that negative direction of C1. We come around here. Using the cross cut, we go back out. And then we get back on C2 and we continue on the positive orientation of C2, uh, getting back to where we started, which was right here. Yeah? Okay, this is how we form C, a simple closed contour. You saw that I just traced C and it's a simple closed contour. Now, uh, for this function f of Z, it is not differentiable, meaning it is not analytic, only at z equals 0 and z equals plus or minus 4i. Uh, places where a function is not analytic are called singularities. So the singularities of this function f of z are marked in x right here, the origin, and then uh, negative 4i, and then positive 4i right there. Those are the uh, three X's. Those are the singularities. Now, notice that the singularities are outside of the angulus, and therefore, they're outside of uh, what C encloses. And therefore, because everywhere uh, inside of and on C, uh, that is inside the angulus and on C, this function f of Z is uh, analytic, that is differentiable, as the only places that it's not differentiable are outside of uh, this region that we're talking about, uh, using Cauchy's theorem, we can conclude that the integral is equal to zero. Yes, I said it. That's all you had to do. You didn't have to do anything fancier than that. Isn't this really, really powerful? Because as you can see, like it makes doing uh, certain integrals very simple. All right, so more examples of Cauchy's theorem to come in future videos. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and keep watching. Take care.